Hey class, we'll try this one more time. I think I have the Cam Studio settings set correctly now. What I'm going to show you is how to install Maven, JaxRS, and Spring in your own application so that you can uh, set up the project a little bit more similarly to perhaps what you've experienced in the past with uh, a common interface shared between a client and a server. First, notice that this is the standard J2EE download from the Eclipse website. It's Eclipse Junior. I downloaded it just a few days ago, so it should be pretty up to date. If you go to Help Install New Software, then there's one piece of software that you need to add that doesn't come with the standard deploy, which is M2 Eclipse. That's this one right here. You'll use this URL here to install it. Now, mine's already installed, but I'll show you how I did it. I clicked Add. And then I took that update URL, pasted it right here. And then gave it a name. Any name will do. Clicked OK. And then this came up right here. Here you can select the bottom two. Those are the only two that you need. Click Next, and I'll take you through an installation process. Once that installation process is complete, you'll restart Eclipse. And then you'll be able to use Maven inside of Eclipse. It's a really powerful tool, and it's basically the industry standard right now. So then the next thing that you want to do is create a new project. Go down to Other and say New Maven Project. Click Next. Click Next again. You don't need anything on the first page. Here it's going to load the different Maven arch archetypes that are available. An archetype is just a project type. Just like going to New Project and selecting Dynamic Web Project, here we're going to do something uh, uh, analogous, but in the Maven way, and say, I need a Maven archetype web app. And I'll create the same kind of thing. So we'll go next. We'll give it a name. And we're good. It's all created. If you look here, it's created some different directories for us. Looks like it's missing one directory. There seems to be a small bug um, right now in the current version of the archetype. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. We just need to create this folder here. OK, there we go. Now you're going to have three files that you're going to be working with. One is the palm. One is the WebXML. And another is one that we'll create, which is used to configure Spring. The palm configures the libraries that you need in your project. The WebXML configures servlets and other kinds of things about the Tomcat container itself. And the Beans XML is for Spring. So first, let's look at the POM. Here you can see there, there's one sample dependency here. You'll need three more to make your project work. You'll need two for Spring and one for CXF. And if we come over here to a project that I have already completed, we can see the two Spring ones right here. I need Spring Context and Spring Web. The way that you provide dependencies in, in uh, Maven is you provide the group at the top, which is essentially the package name for the, pro for, the pa for the project, but it doesn't have to be, the artifact name, and the version. Ultimately, the jar will be called spring-context.3.1.0.release.jar. And that's how Maven differentiates. Those are the two jars that you need for Spring. Now, in the wiki documentation that is on our friend's website, um, it's a little outdated. It uses an older version of Spring and an older version of CXF. I would advocate that you use these newer versions, Spring 3.1.0 and CXF 2.7.0. This demo was written to work for those instructions. Or, excuse me, this demo is written to for those versions. Now your POM's done. Eclipse will automatically bring those files in. It will download them from the web and put them into your project. If you want to see them, you can see them right here. You can see it's downloaded them all. The next thing to do is alter your web XML. Now I'll explain what's going on, but I'm just going to copy and paste this. I know that most of you are very familiar with servlets, so I won't spend a lot of time here. The two things that I want to highlight are what each one is doing, though. This is for CXF. 
it's created a servlet, and it says that it wants that servlet to run any time that slash rest star is part of the URI. And uh, the CXF servlet is the thing that can interpret REST requests. So you definitely want to use this. It's going to save you a lot of time on your project. These are for Spring. Spring elected to not use a servlet. Instead, they use what's called a listener. And we're not going to learn here in this class what listeners are. It's just another way to participate inside uh, web requests. At this point, you're done uh, with the web XML. This is standard Spring. And this is standard CXF. You can look at it in their beginner's guides of you know, how to install Spring or CXF in your Java project. You can also find it in that same uh, blog tutorial. And this part has not changed, so you can copy it directly from there. The last thing that you'll need is a Beans XML file. This is what the Beans XML file will look like when you're done. There are some elements to keep in mind. First, it is an XML file, which means you have namespaces. If you're unfamiliar, namespaces in XML are just like import statements in Java. You go ahead and say where to find it. This is like the package name. And then you give it a variable name, which is a little bit different than in Java. You say that whenever I refer to this, I'm referring to those definitions contained in this package, or namespace, in the case of XML. This is some namespace translation helpers, and you'll need it to be pretty darn close, if not exactly like this. Then you'll notice some import statements and this particular XML. These two together are for the purpose of getting CXF set up in, and integrated with the Spring container. This middle part is just a convenience tag that will make it so that you don't have to spend very much time here in the XML file doing Spring configurations. I highly recommend it, which is why it's included here but it's not critical to getting your project working. The only other thing to notice here is this. This is referring to the bean that I would like JAXRS to implement based on the REST requests or invoke based on the REST requests that get sent to it. So let's create that class and then we'll be done. We'll give it a package name, and then uh, we'll just take that name. Spring will automatically lowercase it for you, the first letter, so make sure to capitalize it. And then lowercase it in your Spring file. And if this were just a regular old class, then you might do something like this. But we want to restify it. We want CXF to be able to call it based on some RESTful invocation. So we need to add about five annotations here. The first one is service. This one lets Spring know that it should include it as part of its XML or its resolution in that XML file. The second is path. This is JAXRS. This URL says when you see slash prime in the URL after the context path, then you're talking about this class and I'd like you to invoke this class. The next is the sub resource. And so this says when you see slash prime slash this wildcard, then call this method. All I need to do is attach that to the particular parameter in question. And now it will call this method and take whatever's in this URL and put it in this member or in this uh, function parameter. There are just two more things that I need here. One is to say that it's going to be a get request. And the other is to give it some kind of MIME type response. Please, when you return this, return it as text plain. This last one isn't typically required, but I discovered a little bug inside uh, the Eclipse web browser that basically renders this uh, the output not as useful. And so for the purpose of the demo, I've added this. So now we should be able to run on the server. It takes about five seconds to start up usually. So here we go. Hello world. 
And let's go to our URL, rest slash prime slash three. Rest is what's invoking the CXF servlet. And these are the two values that were in my JaxRest annotations. And we see we get true. So it works. This is how you get, re get JaxRS, Maven, and Spring working together in your application for your project. Good luck.